I've been told recently here that as a YouTuber, I'm supposed to hold the mic. So I'm, I don't know if this is better, but apparently it makes me a better YouTuber. Before we get into this though, really quickly, this is not some horrific, serious injury. I was just doing a bunch of signings for the Kickstarter and the old pain came back worse than ever. So unfortunately I'm having to delay signing the rest of the bookmarks for the Neon Ghost Kickstarter, though all of the end sheets are already done. Do not worry, we're still gonna be way ahead of schedule and get you the hardbacks well before September of this year, which was the initial promise date, but I just have to take a little bit of a break. If you wanna late back the Kickstarter for my book, Neon Ghosts, it's of course linked down below. No sponsor this video, just this initial plug and information. Let's go ahead and talk about Iron Widow. Iron Widow by Jiren J. Zhao is a YA science fiction book that covers topics of feminism and oppression that uh, was released a couple of years back to quite the overwhelming response. It's hard to find a booktuber, especially one who focuses on YA, that has not covered and given their opinions on Iron Widow. And there is a wide range of opinions on book. And you may know the author, Jiren J. Zhao, either from their YouTube channel, their TikTok, this book themselves, their vocal opinions on Twitter. And it seems due to those vocal opinions, the sequel to Iron Widow has actually been delayed. Heavenly Tyrant is not being put out by the publisher right now. Uh, in response, it seems, to Jiren J. Zhao's recent opinions on Palestine, which unfortunately I cannot get into here, but let's just say I'm very happy to lend my tiny little spotlight to an author that uh, seems to be being silenced by their publisher in a way that I do not personally like. Not that they need my spotlight at all. And my dyslexic ass did try and Google pronunciations for every single character in this book. If I still get any wrong, just know it's not for a lack of trying. It's due to an abundance of stupidity. I went into Iron Widow itself with what I would call very mixed expectations. There are critics I respect that just absolutely do not like this book at all and found it to be borderline abysmal gauging from the reactions and others I respect who think it did a phenomenal job of accomplishing exactly what the book set out to. And in terms of being a YA angled feminist rage piece, as I've seen so many people refer to this or label it as, uh, it's kind of undeniable that Iron Widow is at least succeeding in getting into these topics and providing commentary on them for better or worse. Getting into the setup, Iron Widow takes place in a world that is uh, very Pacific Rim. We are seeing co-pilot entering these gigantic mecha beings to fight this alien force. And the connection between the two pilots of these mechas is a psychic bond that is comfortably supported by an aggressive patriarchy. Male pilots who are seen as celebrities use a harem of co-pilots who have lesser power than them uh, to often just sacrifice women to go into these fights. There are occasionally like pair bonded better pilots who are men and women together who become celebrities in their own right as a duo. But this whole narrative is steeped in sexism and often reflects not only America's patriarchy, but the patriarchy we've seen throughout the world, throughout history, and just some of the most breakdown, you know, dehumanization of women ways, more brutally represented than I think I've ever seen in a YA angled book. Our protagonist, Wu Zian, Zitian, I really am trying here, I do apologize if I'm getting that wrong, isn't even what I would call like a morally righteous protagonist, even though it would be so easy for Iron Widow to have her slide into that role and just be completely in the right all the time. Instead, Jiren J. Zhao has crafted this protagonist to be a reflection of the trauma they've been forced to go through. They absolutely make morally questionable decisions at times. At the beginning of this book, they are just straight up trying to act as an assassin. You can agree that maybe their assassination mission is justified, but you know, murder is wrong. God, is it tempting at times. <laughs> I was just rewatching Midnight Mass and I am not pro murder, I am not pro death penalty, but f Bev. You know what I mean? There's a lot of that similar vibe here in Iron Widow where there's people who are so deplorable that are more extreme actions from our protagonist you don't necessarily agree with with your whole heart, but there's certainly that angle of like, no, stop, they shouldn't be murdered horrifically by you. What a shame. But keeping it spoiler free, Wu Zian through a series of events is eventually rising through the ranks of being one of these mecha pilots and is given the label Iron Widow, where they are eventually paired with a 
pilot who quite well matches them. And I want to give Iron Widow a lot of props for this character as a whole, because to me, he is recognition of the fact that men can inadvertently or deliberately also be a victim of the patriarchy. If you do not conform to patriarchal beliefs, if you do not fall in line with typical masculine roles, you can be rejected and eventually used and exploited yourself. There are all kinds of systems in place to try and hurt genuine allies or traumatize them to the point where they end up giving up on the cause. And through this character, addiction is also brought into play in quite a vivid and realistic way. And I want to give Iron Widow props for that because I believe the only way to respectfully depict addiction is to depict it realistically. And as anyone who is watching this who has dealt with someone they love or themselves dealt with addiction uh, will back me up in saying it is extraordinary how far addiction can go in destroying someone's character. And as a result, I think this is my favorite character arc in the book and it's the one that I related to the most. And this brings us to the final of the three main characters, Ija, who if Shimin is the more typical masculine role, Ija embodies a more typically feminine man who is rejected for all the reasons you would assume as well. And these three characters, their relationship to each other and their development throughout the book is the strongest point of Iron Widow for me by far. Because this book has been out for a while and quite a bit of it, as I'm aware just through conversation, has spread throughout the zeitgeist of YA fantasy. I don't feel like it's too big a spoiler to say this is a book where, hey, everyone kind of turns out to be a bit bi and as a bi, thank you. There's a whole lot of books with nothing but gays. There's a whole lot of books with nothing but straights. It feels good to have a book with a bunch of bi's. I just wish at the end of the day, uh, my liking for Iron Widow as a whole held up to my liking of these individual characters. But my overall enjoyment and appreciation of Iron Widow is quite a bit conflicted. Most of it though, I'm happy to say, comes down to just personal taste differences. I am aggressively someone who wants a slow burn of a book typically, the longer you're willing to just paint a picture of a world, sit in a scene, that's the style I prefer. Iron Widow, I believe in more typical YA fashion though, just clips along very quickly through most of the events. And as a result, I never really got fully immersed in the world itself. The world building has a lot of potential here. And I hope whenever we do get Heavenly Tyrant, it expands on that element of this uh, story a lot because there is great concepts but in terms of me, the reader, being pulled into scene after scene and feeling the weight of the environment beyond just an immediate room that's set up, that is probably my biggest weakness for Iron Widow as a whole. It felt very wispy in terms of the world building, just kind of images brought up before me without making them feel very real. I'm happy to say that doesn't actually extend into the lore or the utilization of Chinese mythology. I can't speak to how well it is utilized in the actual book itself aside from just seeing a whole lot of comments from people who say they're Chinese from China and really enjoy seeing how it's brought in. But in terms of the ideas, the concepts, how they play not only with the story itself, but the themes is fascinating. And there's also this approach to the mecha style combat that was extraordinarily different. And I really liked how surreal it could kind of get at times. But right along with needing for me personally, the story to slow down, clashing with this really delicate approach to how mecha combat is handled is just how hip the book tried to feel at times. And I understand if you're trying to cover the topics that Jaren J. Zhao is trying to approach here, that feeling more modern from a protagonist perspective in a world that's fairly modern can absolutely be appropriate, but it never felt supernatural and often ventured into fellow kids territory for me. And I believe that's why I'm able to kind of pin my biggest gripe with just what felt like a rather clumsy authorial hand overall. But I want to compliment that by saying there is certainly a distinct authorial voice here. I just believe it needs a bit of refinement. I mean, the passion in the pages here is overflowing, and I hope it's a staple of Jiren J. Zhao's writing going forward, because it was really intoxicating at times to have a book that's just so in your face with how aggressively it wants to get its messaging across. I just hope we get to see those points refined down to feel a bit less like hammers. With our main characters being so young, I think it's very understandable that at times they're just emotionally roiling at the surface, especially with how traumatized they are. But there's a 
fine line between having a character being emotionally blunt and a narrative being emotionally blunt. And Iron Widow crossed that line. It got to the point where there was finally someone who didn't just seem to be emotionally stunted talking to our protagonist and actually just being nice to them. And with characters being such clear representations of ideas or conflicts, I was pretty much able to immediately assume where that character was going to be and what they were going to do. And that speaks to Iron Widow's overall predictability as well. I don't think many people are going to be shocked by where this story goes. But as I've said many times before, predictability is not always a bad thing. And once our protagonist's larger plan starts unfurling, that's when I found myself completely drawn into Iron Widow for that reason alone. I really liked once how our protagonists were able to get their feet under them, how much agency they made maintained at all times. That is so commonly a mistake for early attempts at writing, to not put the agency of the narrative, the thrust of it all, behind your characters. I believe I fully made that mistake in both of my first two books and didn't make up for it until Neon Ghosts. But you cannot really level that criticism at Iron Widow. Everything that happens in this book as, as soon as our protagonists get some power behind them is a direct result of their character, their personality, and their choices. And now I must risk this video being demonetized because we need to talk about sexuality within Iron Widow. Sexuality plays a gargantuan role in how these characters connect with each other and how they're able to retake control of their situation in themselves. The weaponization of sexuality, the attempts of exploitation and control through it, the usage of shame, and so many other things we see reflected in our own world every single day are completely talked about, as well as the spotlightification, the celebrification of sexual dynamics and things like media, something that we are overwhelmed with in today's day and age uh, as well, plays a big role in what Iron Widow is trying to say. And I think thematically, like that's the strongest point of Iron Widow. Every idea that's brought into this story has a purpose and is fully understood and handled in a way that clearly the author knows what they're talking about. And when you're following characters who are nearly out of their mind with trauma at times, how they're able to claw their way towards even a somewhat healthy relationship to sex, their own sexual desires, in a world that is so determined to use them against it, is genuinely an endearing part of the story. And I'm glad in a story that is so brutal and so unforgiving the small intimate moments are allowed to shine all the brighter uh, in contrast to that brutality. Intimacy and love, self-determination, these are elements of our own lives that are so often brought into pop culture, that are so often talked about, that we're so often told are not enough. And here, Iron Widow is trying, I feel like at the end of the day, to tell its readers your own intimacy, your own value, who you decide to give yourself to, that's what matters. Who violates, who takes, who exploits, you can always always take that power back. And very often that power people try and hold over you is only as real as society itself allows it to be. Overall, getting into concluding thoughts for the spoiler-free section, I think Iron Widow had so much to say and was able to say a whole lot of it despite some weaker, kind of rougher elements for the writing itself. I finished this book in one day because I was definitely enamored from beginning to end. And while it did feel blunt, it did feel a bit predictable. And at times there was writing that felt a bit forced, a belt a bit to try hard to shove in some poeticism here and there. I absolutely enjoyed the experience. And I think it's important that especially towards a younger audience, these kind of challenging books are put out to cause discussion. And I think especially if someone hasn't come across the ideas before that Jaren J. Zhao is putting in, this could be a really important and impactful book for someone who, who hasn't been allowed to even have these discussions in their day-to-day -day life. As a fantasy book, I would say Iron Widow is fine. It certainly is able to stand out in a crowded field, but isn't exceptional on any technical level. I would say in terms of the ideas discussed and what Jaren J. Zhao is trying to say, it's quite good. For that reason, I am giving Iron Widow like a strong 6 to a light 7. I would say it's closer to a 6.5 than a 7, but it's in that range. And now we're going to go ahead and talk about spoilers in 3, two, one, spoilers. Widow notes. Let's see what I said in my spoiler notes. What I really want to do for the spoiler section is talk about the execution of the final grand plan of our pilots here, because I like nearly every single beat of this. I quite enjoy the whole like working from the inside, setting it up right as we win the war, we get to overthrow the current system. I just wish it had been like, four books building up to this instead of one. Again, personal preference. I am a slow burn guy. I want to sit in a miles in length series, book after book after book, just 
getting into ideas and sitting in environments. So please keep that in mind. It really did to me feel like we needed longer setup, greater like, okay, factions working against each other because it's so chopped down. I feel like we missed opportunities for some really good conflict between these players that have been introduced that were boiled down to just, okay, we're gonna take what you did to this guy and bring it back to you before we get to the final big climactic fight where, yeah, all the beats here, so well worked. Taking this legendary pilot and putting him in the seat underneath Zetian was so thematically resonant for everything the book was trying to build to that point. And having this grand speech at the end where everything is unveiled, it's so hard to keep in a sci-fi fantasy book things like live streaming and, you know, modern technologies like that without them feeling gimmicky. But the way they're addressed, it feels natural. And the infighting among the co-pilots, I'm really interested in and, and excited to see how that's further explored in Heavenly Tyrant. Because we know there are people who are fine benefiting from this current system. It's just going from zero to declaring yourself emperor in one book. It's it's just a lot. Empress, sorry. Even the conflict with like her family being brought in to try and like manipulate her emotionally and keep her in line and her just being like, no, deuces, was great. And I like how she was able to call out like, oh, you were just trying to set me up this whole time to like try and reconnect with my family to use it against me. And I do agree with the larger messaging of like, you know, the full saying of like blood is thicker than water. The actual like second half of that is like, yeah, but like that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> like still, yeah, your plot, your war is more important. And also uh, those people are terrible. I just wanted to sit in that conflict longer and not have it so aggressively handled by our protagonist. Though, you could just say that's the characterization that's happening here. Even as Jiren J. Zhao describes him on their website, is someone not to be trifled with. It's just going to move forward like a force of will in their own right. And so I think the characterization on all counts of her main trio rock solid. And it's reflective of how we're constantly seeing called out. Like she has to do these humiliating photo shoots to play these characters. Yet later on a photo shoot where she just happens to be nude is tried to be used against her. And it's like, you're already doing this to me in the media. Why would I care? Like, this is all just shame you're trying to invent for everything I really like like that. There's another thing where it's like the whole, oh, the aliens we've been fighting are actually the natural ones in the planet and we're the invaders. We got that. There's this back and forth of, I like the bluntness thematically and how it's being done to just point out how egregious so many elements of this society and therefore our own society are. I just wish the bluntness when it comes to set up and pay off, the world building, things along those lines had a, had a greater overall balance to it. I think for a younger audience, especially one that's really interested in these ideas and needs to see them represented in a way that they can relate to is really important. But one of the main reasons I'm excited for Heavenly Tyrant isn't just for a continued exploration of these ideas being handled quite Quite well, but also to see how they've evolved as a writer to possibly package all of this with a substantial amount more refinement. But that was just my thoughts on Iron Widow by Jiren J. Zhao. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Goodbye! Let's get you back in your little holder, because it turns out, as a YouTuber, I prefer that. <laughs>